Many, many years ago, I made a video called Tim Builds a Moderately Priced Streaming PC, or something along those lines. Now, this was many years ago, so it was even before we had our reference systems on our website. So in that video, I went through the process of building a budget vMix PC. Now, in this video today, I'm actually going to be replacing that video by replacing our tutorial PC and going through the process of how I build this less than budget vMix PC for our tutorial here. This is our tutorial PC. Now, this gets used for a lot of different things here at vMix, including tutorial recordings, live streams, it's the vMix Funtime Live Show set, and we do a lot of testing and that type of thing with it as well. Unfortunately, it's getting a little bit old. It's a seventh gen i7 CPU, so we're going to be replacing it today. She doesn't know, so please don't tell her. Now, because we use it uh, for a lot of random things, it's a bit of a unique build. It's not exactly following our reference systems PCs, but if you are looking to build a vMix PC, definitely check out our reference systems on our website and you'll be able to check and see what will fit your production and you can build a PC accordingly. One of the biggest things to consider when building a vMix PC is, do you need a capture card? Now, if you need a capture card, then you're going to have to have a motherboard that will support it. You'll need to have a motherboard with enough PCI Express lanes for the capture card that you want to put in your PC. So you'll need to make sure that that matches up so that you get the best quality video coming through. Now it can be a little bit confusing and pretty tricky because a lot of motherboards nowadays just don't have the additional PCI Express slots or lanes for a capture card. I recently made a video about PCI Express and capture cards and motherboards. So definitely check out that and I'll link it in the description. It'll go over what sort of motherboard you might need for the capture cards that you have. Now, because we have a pretty specific build here where we need two capture cards, we're going to need a pretty specific motherboard that's going to support the number of slots and lanes that we need for those capture cards. So that's what I'm going to be going through when we purchase the motherboard. And finally, a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card is a must for a PC build. So we have a spare 3060 or a 3060 Ti floating around, so I'm going to install that into my new computer. We do have a 3090 in the current tutorial PC, but we don't really need it. It was just floating around, so we put it in there. But we'll probably put a low-end 3000 series in this particular build. All right, so I think that's about it. I'm gonna jump over to my computer now and start buying some parts. Here I am now over on my office computer going through my PC parts. Now, I definitely recommend checking out the reference system page on vmix.com so you can see what sort of parts you're going to need in order to build a computer for your specific production. Now, this is going to be slightly different to the reference PC because I do have certain things I want to try out, like this new Ryzen processor, but it will have all of the major components required for a good vmix PC, and that includes a good CPU, a motherboard that's going to support the number of capture cards we require, which is two, and then also a dedicated NVIDIA graphics card. Now you'll notice that it's not on the list here, and that's because we have plenty of 3000 series GPUs floating around the office, so I'll probably put a 3060 Ti in this machine. So definitely get an NVIDIA graphics card. All right, let's take a look at this CPU. So it's an AMD Ryzen 9 7900X processor, and that's a part of the AMD Ryzen 7000 series on the AM5 platform with AMD. And it is a 4.7 gigahertz base clock speed CPU, which should be really awesome for vMix. Now we could have gone with the Intel 13th gen i7, but I do wanna try out this Ryzen just to see how it goes. Next of all, we're going to have a look at the motherboard, which is the most important thing for our capture cards. We've gone with the MSI MEG X670E Ace DDR5 motherboard. Now this one is really cool because it allows us to have multiple capture cards. So let's take a look at the motherboard now. So you can see here that we have three by 16 slots on our motherboard. And you might think, oh great, I can put three awesome cards in there. I can have a GPU and I can have two really good capture cards. Unfortunately, that's not always the case when it comes to these motherboards. It looks like it's a full by 16, but there's only a certain number of lanes connected to it. So they're physically or mechanically by 16, but they're not electrically connected by that many lanes. So let's take a look at what the specifications are. So we'll go down here to the expansion slot. Now, as I mentioned, it does have three PCIe by 16 slots. So it physically by 16. However, we need to know how many lanes they are, and this will display it here. So we have the first one is connected by 16 lanes, by eight lanes, and then by four lanes. And the great thing is, is these are also directly connected to the CPU. So they're dedicated PCI Express lanes, which is exactly what we want for our capture cards. 
Now you can't use them in this configuration. The configurations are listed up here. So we would use by eight, by eight and by four. So that means in the top one, we'd put our GPU. Then we'd have a high capacity capture card here that could take up to eight lanes. And then the next one, we could have another capture card that would be four lanes. Now, one thing that you do want to consider is to make sure that they go to the CPU. You want them directly connected to the CPU and not using the chipset. So if you have a look down here, you'll see we have this one here that says from chipset, which typically means that the lanes are going to be shared and they're not dedicated lanes. Okay, so that is a quick explanation as to how we can get these, this amount of lanes on this motherboard here. You will notice the price, $1,299. And that's because we do get the full capacity of the lanes to this CPU. Now we could have gone with a $500 one here and that allows us to have what seems like one, two, three and a bit slots here. However, when we look at the specifications, there is uh, one by 16 to the CPU and then one by four. So these other ones are connected by one and by two from the chipset and not the CPU. So this would only really allow us to have the graphics card and then one four lane capture device, which might work for some people, but we do need two capture devices for this build. Now underneath that, we have the hard drive here. We've got an M.2, one terabyte SSD, Windows 10, 850 watt power supply. Definitely go and check out one of these PSU calculators from one of the manufacturers just to put in your processor, graphics card fans, cooling, all that kind of stuff and see how much wattage you'll need. We do have some RGBs here. Uh, we have some RGB RAM. Now, typically I'd probably get Corsair RAM here, but this particular RAM supports the MSI Mystic controlling software. Ooh, and so hopefully I can sync up the entire case and all the components together. That's my theory. So this is DDR5 RAM, which is awesome, super fast, 5200 megahertz, which goes with our CPU and motherboard. It all should be above board. We've gone two by 16 because we have two channels, so we can have the two RAM slots going. And underneath that, we have the MSI MAG Core Liquid, Liquid Cooler again, so I can light it up together with the Mystic software. So hopefully it all flashes in the right way and looks like a cool Christmas tree, I guess. All right, so you notice that I don't have a case here. I've gone ahead and got this Fractal Design Define 7 case here. That's an EATX case because we have an EATX motherboard. We have a slightly larger one. This one here is an EATX motherboard, which means we do need some extra space. Again, another thing to consider. And then finally, we have this Fractal Design fan that I'm going to be installing because it does sync up with our software. So theoretically, we could have the fans the case, the lights, the RAM, and the cooler all flashing at the same time. Hopefully this all arrives at some point and I'll put it together. So mostly the parts arrived over the next couple of weeks. Here's a tip for you. Don't try and buy computer parts over Christmas and New Year's. It's gonna take a while for it to arrive. So that's a bit of an amateur hour on my behalf. Speaking of amateur hour, this video here is terrible due to the camera setting that I had and the room that I filmed this in. So the video is going to be terrible for this next section. Liquid cooler, SSD, DDR5, CPU, motherboard. So here's my fancy case ready to go and my motherboard and everything. Now I did get these additional fans here for RGB, so we'll see how that works out. My Ryzen CPU. We're back to day two. I brought some coffee and I'm gonna try and make a computer. Actually, it's probably not a good idea to have coffee near this thing. Probably. I finally remembered what I was missing, the hammer. So I made sure I hammered everything in. The CPU went in fine. The cooling was a bit weird as all the CPU coolers and stuff all fit in differently now, depending on what chipset you've got. Went in okay though. I took the case apart quite a bit because I needed a lot of room for these ARGB cables that I had floating around. Like all these ones out the back of the case here I need to put in somewhere. Got the GPU from another computer, it's a 3060, and um, yeah, I think that's about it. So I'm not like super confident about the situation, so what I'm gonna do is try and turn it on and uh, see how we go. I've got lights. So it looks like first go, it actually loaded up, which is pretty impressive. So I'm gonna chuck windows on it now, get it all kicked off. It hasn't caught on fire yet, which is the plus around here. Oh yeah, RGBs. I think we got them lit. So I went through and set up NVIDIA drivers and downloaded all the drivers that I needed and also got the MSI Mystic Lights software. Ooh. Okay, so I've never really built a ARGB computer PC before to look cool. So I really don't know how it works. I think I managed to turn the whole thing off. As you can see here, all the lights are off. So now I'm gonna try and turn them all on. So I've selected all of them. What if I could just do like a single color? 
Amazing, right? It's like a dentist's office. Maybe it does look like a dentist's office. Maybe that's what I was going for. This is what I call high quality cable management. Oh yeah. Now I've got to sort all of this out and put the case back together, which is on the floor. And finally, everything went back on together. And so hopefully everything in the case is all sorted. However, I did make a mistake and I realized I had a problem right about now. I think that's about it for this computer. Now I do need to go ahead and grab all the stuff from the other computer, the capture card, the other drive and that sort of thing. So I probably shouldn't have put the case back together. Almost there. And it's very important to upgrade your fridge to the latest CPU version. Here I am with my trusty old friend here. And we're gonna turn it on one last time just to make sure that we've got all of the information that we might need or things we haven't considered uh, when transferring to the new computer. So it is a bit of a sad day. I'm pretty upset. Uh, unfortunately, we can't afford the rights to any Sarah McLaughlin, so I can't play that here, but I'm just gonna take a minute here. I'm gonna turn it on one last time and just reminisce about all the fun times that we had in our tutorial videos over the years. So this is it. This is the last recording that we're going to be doing with our tutorial PC here. Now it has seen us through so much over the years. It was the first computer that we built when we moved into this office and built these studios. It was purpose built just for doing these tutorials and it's made hundreds of tutorials. It's done tons of live streams. Millions of people have seen videos produced by this or have been in the background of over the years. It was pre-pandemic and helped us make a bunch of tutorials that people had to watch in order to learn how to live stream over the last few years. So it has been a real asset for us and it has actually worked perfectly over the last few years. So I am quite emotional and sad to see it go. So unfortunately we do have to move on. So if you are moving on to a new computer, if you're building a new one and you want to transfer everything over, we're going to have to move the Blackmagic card from this one to the new one, install the drivers to make sure that's all working. Then we're going to need to move the drives over as well. So I have some M2 drives in this and I'm going to be moving to the new computer. So it's also really important to make a list of all the different things that you use on the computer. So like drivers that you might need for audio devices like a Behringer or a Focusrite device and uh, things like the Stream Deck. So just go through and make sure that you have a list of all the programs that you might need to install on the new computer so you kind of have more of a seamless transition over. All right, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off now and uh, maybe shed a few tears again and then move things over to the new computer. Goodbye, old friend. So if you do have one of these black magic cards, remember that it does actually require power. So you need to have power in there. Made that mistake before. It was a SATA drive. Anyone want a spare 3090? All right, so I've got all the stuff here. I've got the graphics card that I don't need anymore, so I'll just chuck that out. I've got the Blackmagic uh, 8K Pro. I've got this SATA drive, which apparently was floating around, and I've got the M2 drive as well, so I'm gonna chuck all that into this computer now. Now I've gotta find some room for this SSD SATA somewhere. I'll slap it on the back, I think. And finally, I put in the Blackmagic design card in the first slot of the motherboard. So I think that's about it for the transfer of this computer over to this computer. I've got the capture card in, I've powered it, I've got the M2 drive in here, I've got the SATA drive, which is an SSD, which is now plugged in on the back here. Now, as I mentioned before, I do have a spare slot for another capture device. I don't need it right now, but I will in the future, so I do have another spare slot. So that's one of the pros of having this EATX motherboard. Unfortunately, like I said, this case didn't really fit it, so I do have some problems with the cable management here. It doesn't look as good as it should because the cables are feeding out through the bottom as opposed to where they're supposed to go in because the EATX kind of encroaches on that. Bit of a problem, however, the next size up cases are massive and I didn't want an absolutely massive case. So EATX will give you probably more PCI and more features. However, you've got to find a case that's going to fit it properly if you want to have cool cable management. So I think that's about done. I'm going to now take this and move this into the tutorial PC and just finish everything and finally, hopefully, get it all up and running. All right. Now, it's always a really good idea to leave all the plastic coating on the outside so you don't scratch it like I have done over and over and over again. Yeah, I think I've got everything mostly plugged in, so I'm going to try turning it on now and see how we go. Well, that's a good start. It's always good when it fires up 
after you've moved it. We had one PC where we had it upstairs and then we moved it downstairs and it stopped working, but it was nothing to do with the move. It was just a coincidence when we turned off the computer, it refreshed back to an older firmware on the motherboard. Huzzah! Monitors work, so it looks like everything is currently working. The PC is still on, hasn't caught fire yet, so that's really good news. Now the fun begins, I need to go through and install all my drivers and programs that I'm going to be need for recording tutorials and for live streaming on this PC. So I'm going to be doing that for the next little bit. Here's a fun fact for you. As I'm installing my programs and drivers to the new computer, I cannot see my old hard drive anywhere. So I've gone to the disk manager, I've gone to the BIOS, the drive is not showing up. So I've taken it out of the new computer, put it into the old computer to make sure that it's working fine. Totally works fine. So I updated the firmware on it, put it back in the new computer, tried all the M.2 slots and nothing. Cannot see the drive at all. Now I come to realize that that M.2 is actually an M.2 SATA drive and these new AMD motherboards, a lot of them don't support an M.2 SATA slot. They're all NVMe PCI Express. So unfortunately this one doesn't support it. Some of them do. Most of the Intel will have at least one M.2 SATA slot, but this one doesn't have any. So that was a bit of a pain. Just another thing to consider when you are building a motherboard, if you've got old drives and that sort of thing to make sure that you've got a compatible motherboard for them to work. All right, so here we are now inside the new vMix tutorial PC, recording a tutorial about the new vMix tutorial PC. All right, so let's talk about some of the things that we needed to do to get this all up and running. So firstly, we downloaded the latest Blackmagic drivers for our 8K Pro capture card in here. Now, one of the really easy things about our production is that we just use embedded audio from the capture card. So we have a Deity S-Mic shotgun microphone up here. It goes into the camera and then embeds the audio into the signal via SDI. So we don't have any additional audio interfaces or mixing desks or anything like that for audio. Now, if you do have one of those, you'll probably need to download the drivers for those in order to bring the audio into vMix. Now, one of the things that we do use here is a VST3 plugin from Waves. So we use the NS1 audio filter. So we needed to download the Waves Central application and transfer the license to this computer in order to use NS1. So that tries to cut out the noise from the computer behind us, which I think is louder than the last one. Uh, so it tries to cut out the noise so you can only hear my voice on that particular um, audio input. Now we have a Stream Deck here as well, which we're not using for this production, but we'd need to install the Stream Deck software in order to get that to work. And I'm sure there's plenty of other software and hardware out there that require drivers in order for it to work on your computer and in vMix. So you just need to remember what you had on your old production. Now for the computer, we made sure that we had resizable bar installed uh, on the graphics card in the BIOS. Uh, in the NVIDIA settings, we preferred performance. And uh, we just went through and made sure that the computer was set up all right, like our RAM was at full capacity and went through the BIOS and just made sure everything was uh, up to scratch there. So here we are in our vMix production here. This is the same preset that we had on our old computer pretty much. Basically, I have a storage drive that I used and I just moved that over to the new computer. So we had all of our vMix presets and assets and recordings and everything all ready to go basically. So I could just load it up straight away without any problems. So here we are here, uh, we have three cameras. I have this Ursa Mini here. I've got an Ada PTZ camera on the desk here and I have a Sony PXW-Z90 up here as well. Now these are all coming in at uh, 1080 60. So we've got 1080 60 on these cameras. I also have a petrol camera here. Uh, I can play this video file as well. Now, uh, as you can see, we're running single digits on the render time and we have single digits on the CPU as well. Now that's also running two recordings as well. So I have two recordings set up. I've got an MP4 of the main output here, and I've also got a vMix AVI recording of a desktop capture. And I forgot to mention, I have a desktop capture running as well. So these both have zero frame drops, which is fantastic. And we still have no problems with the render time or the CPU. So yeah, that's uh, my current production. Absolutely no trouble at all. Uh, let's maybe try and give it some trouble. So let's go for a stream here. We've got a live LAN set up at 1086 megabit. Yep, let's give that a go. Let's go to the multi-quarter, see what we've got here. We've got our camera, Ada camera and Sony camera. Yep, MP4, sure, why not? Um, let's start that, let's give that a go. And let's, uh, let's see how we're handling it now. All right, so as you can see, the render time is still single digits and the CPU and the total is under 20%. So yeah. Um, this should be able to handle it uh, no problem at all for what we've got going on and could probably handle a whole lot more. I think that about does it for Tim tries to build a new vMix streaming PC. 
It is the next day and I have been running some more tests this morning and everything seems to be going okay. However, knowing my luck, I'm sure there are one or two things that I've completely forgotten about. So I will be doing some more testing over the upcoming days and weeks to make sure that everything is right for these productions. I'll also be testing out this Ryzen 7000 series to make sure that it works well with vMix. Now, if you are building a new PC for vMix, make sure that you follow the comprehensive rules of live streaming and they are to test, test, and test again. Run through a full production scenario to make sure that all of your PC and vMix settings are as they should be. Now, did Tim learn anything when he was trying to build this new PC? Yes, he did. He realized that his old M.2 SATA drive from the old computer wouldn't work on this motherboard. So that's something to consider if you are bringing old drives across, you need to make sure that they work. So this motherboard only supports the NVMe PCI Express M.2 drives and not the SATA M.2 drives. And I really had absolutely no idea about that. So uh, thankfully we didn't need that drive. We had already bought a new drive and we installed Windows to that. So that's our new drive that we're running off. It's an NVMe PCI Express and our asset drive that we had for vMix with all of our files and stuff on it was a SATA drive that we put on the back of this and just plugged in via SATA cable. So we didn't actually need that M.2 SATA drive, but it would have been nice to be able to put it in there as well. So that's something to consider. I also was shocked, not shocked, that it was kind of difficult to buy a motherboard to have multiple capture cards in it. This one was expensive, uh, but we do need those capture cards. And it did turn out to be an EATX form factor, which didn't quite work with our ATX case here. So these mid tower cases say they support EATX, but they don't really because the ATX boards have slots next to them that allow you to put the cables through really easily to make the cable management really cool. But the EATX kind of goes over those slots and you can't quite fit them in. You can, but you can't really. So it doesn't make it look as pretty as I was hoping. So that was a bit of a bummer in regards to the case. We do have a massive case that we have our studio PC in, but it's uh, it's huge. And I didn't really want to put it here. The whole thing would probably collapse. It's a massive case. So I crammed everything in here, but you know, it is what it is. Now on that note, would I go full ARGB with this case again? Probably not. For regular vMix builds, you really don't need all of that lighting and all that kind of stuff. I would probably go with a Noctua air cooling on the CPU, but because we wanted to have the RGBs, we have to have the radiator cooling and make it look cool, light up the fans, all that kind of stuff. So I probably wouldn't go uh, that far. It does look cool, uh, but you probably don't need to spend any extra money on RGB or lights for the case and that type of thing. But if you do want it to look cool, then you can. Now, let's be honest, it wouldn't be quite right if I didn't show you all of these features that the lights can do, seeing as I spent all this time and effort and money on it. So let's take a look at it now. So basically we have this Mystic Light software here that allowed us to control everything together. So you can select all the individual connectors, but we've just gone to select all so it all matches up and we have it set on a light. However, we could do some cool things like we could go energy here. We can apply that. So we're gonna see an energy thing flashes on and off and all that kind of thing. So basically we've synced up the motherboard ports. So we've got all of the fans, we've got the CPU light, we've got the um, power cable that we've also connected. Uh, the RAM itself is on a slightly different thing. So we have to set the RAM differently, but we could um, set it to something different like a rainbow wave if we want to and apply that. So now we have energy with a rainbow wave RAM. So you're welcome. <laughs> so I don't know whether it was really worth it, but it does look kind of cool now. It looks like I've got a disco behind me. So I switched this back to a single color because the flashing was giving me a bit of a headache. Now with our PC build, everything seemed to go pretty well. However, if you're not all that confident in building your own computer, you can check out our reseller page on our website and have a look for those that do custom systems. They'll be able to build you a vMix spec PC for your live video productions. Now you could also probably go to our reference systems page and grab the PC parts that are there and then pass them onto a local computer builder if you wanted to go that way. Now, because this is our first Ryzen 7000 series build, I'm not sure whether it quite fits somewhere in our reference systems page. So um, we'll do some more testing with it. We might update it, we might not, but um, so far so good, it seems pretty good for vMix. Now the PC itself is good because we have a dedicated NVIDIA GPU. We have that good CPU. We have the motherboard that supports the capture card and we have enough RAM and power supply and all that kind of stuff. So it's pretty much what we recommend for vMix. 
However, if you are building a PC and you want the exact parts and everything and what we recommend, check out the reference systems on our website for sure. If you want to build a new vMix computer and you have any questions, definitely drop us an email via the contact page on vmix.com. We can't do any technical questions on YouTube comments, so definitely send us an email and make sure that you check out our reference systems page first. I'm going to finish this off by showing you a video of me peeling the plastic off the glass of the case. Definitely leave this to the last step so that you don't make any dints or anything on the glass or have any problems with your case. So thanks for watching and we'll stream you later. Ooh.